In the fall of 2003, producers for the Discovery Channel show Dirty Jobs contacted controversial artist Stephen Patternight, inviting him to participate in a new television series showcasing a variety of difficult and often distasteful jobs. They had witnessed his unique roadkill creations on his website and wanted a hands-on demonstration of his craft. The segment was to have host Mike Rowe assist Stephen in the procurement and creation of a new artwork. It was indeed to be a dirty job. What follows is the original, uncut episode of Dirty Jobs, an episode ultimately rejected by the network, an episode now notoriously deemed too gross for discovery. That's right, West Akron, Ohio is home to a unique taxidermist named Steve Patternight. Hey there. Hello, how, how you are doing? You? I'm good, thank you. How are good you? Good to see you. Oh my God. For the past 30 years, Steve has also been recycling roadkill. He's been turning it into works of art. So Steve, are we in your living room or in, a, in your gallery? Well, it's both, Mike. This is my home museum. And it's where I display all of my creatures that I make and have over the past 30 years. Let's begin with the, uh, the kitty cat. Kitty cat is one of my favorites. It probably evokes the most controversy when uh, the average person takes a look at this. You think? Absolutely. This is a uh, combination piece. And kitty cat, <coughs> the basis of kitty cat is a freeze-dried Siamese cat and that I had for many, many years. And one day I was looking at it and I thought, hmm, this would look good with a baby doll's head on it. I, I <laughs> severed the, the head off of this freeze-dried cat uh -huh. and put this baby doll head on. These are not baby doll eyes. These are actually glass eyes made for a coyote. Really? Yes. So you And I finished it off to hide the seam where I made the connection. I put a red collar and bells and I placed them on a red velvet cushion. What'd you do with the cat head? Well, that's over here. Would you like to see that? I thought you'd never ask. So this would be Kitty Cat 2. That's right, Mike. After I created Kitty Cat 1, I had the rest of a baby doll body, and I had a sawed-off cat head. May I, may I lift the... Go right ahead. I just want to get a... Oh, it's got some weight to it. So what we have here is a... We got a... We got a backward baby. That's right. A little, little bottoms facing out. And, That's right. And uh, up here, of course, we have the, the cat head. And uh, if we reverse this, this creature, that's that's the front of the baby. That's correct. Complete with the uh, with the navel and the whole, it's the whole an unit there. Yeah, I'll say. This is um, maybe one of the most alarming things I've ever seen. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now I take it back. This might be one of the most alarming things I've ever seen. Thank you. You're welcome again. What do you call this, Steve? This is called the Mechanicsburg Pigeon Massacre. And actually, I read an article in the Akron Beacon Journal about a town down near Columbus, Ohio, called Mechanicsburg. And they have an annual pigeon shoot because of the influx of pigeons everywhere in the community. And I read the article that they had uh, armed the citizens with shotguns, and they just went out and slaughtered these pigeons. So, I mean, is the goal of this to get people to think, to get people well, to step back? Well, and absolutely, and I really think a lot of my pieces are thought-provoking. Steve, I don't imagine I'm going to see this in a hunting lodge anytime soon. I doubt it. I doubt it. But it's very, uh, it's very homey here over your fireplace. This is the Hand of Man. This is called Hand of Man, and it uh, depicts the slaughter in Ohio of the deer population. So you've incorporated the elements. We have a... That's right. I have the tire, again, uh -huh. and these are freeze-dried... Uh, deer feet. I have a life cast of a hand. Mm -hmm. Deer head with a uh, miniature tire in place of its nose. And, around the and I've highlighted the border with actual, these are hoofs. How long did it take you to put this together? This probably took me about six months. Are these for sale? Absolutely they're for sale. Yeah? What sure. are you asking for this? This would probably be about $5,000 yeah. if I sold it. Steve, he looks positively peaceful. He is very peaceful, Mike. In fact, uh, he was picked out in the Cuyahoga Valley. Yeah. And I had him freeze dried. This, uh, I give up. This is Robocock. Robocock? Robocock. I see. Yes. So you've gone with, uh, this is a, obviously a, a rooster? This was a rooster that I found that was mounted, and I completely disassembled the whole piece and incorporated a, a mechanical legs 
and fashioned with pheasant. These are actual pheasant uh, claws huh? or feet. There's no spring to pull or string no. to hear the cockadoodle do or anything like that? None at all. Okay. That would probably be over the top. Absolutely. You're a very creative guy, Steve. Well, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Coming up next, I take a roadkill road trip with my new friend Steve. It turns out to be a real cut up. This is definitely dead now, right? This, I think it is. Okay. It's dead. Have you ever wondered what you get when you cross a turkey and a turtle? It's turkle, of course. And that's just one of the bizarre creatures and creations that artist and taxidermist Steve Patternight has fashioned together using bits and pieces of roadkill. After admiring some of Steve's work in his homemade museum, I joined him on the road to search for the raw materials of his trade. So we're cruising the west side of, uh, of Akron, looking for, looking for what exactly? We're looking for anything that might have been hit by a car, possibly over the night, last night. Uh, wild animals, maybe some possum, maybe some raccoon. Right. But I like to work with fresh roadkill. And in the summer months, unless you pick up a roadkill within hours after it's been killed, not so it starts to decompose. Yeah. And it's not something I want to cut into. Right. So we're looking for really anything at this point that's not that's not moving. Anything that's not moving and is in pretty good shape. Whoa, 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 whoa there. A likely candidate. It didn't take long for our roadkill scavenger hunt to pay off. And let me tell you, this raccoon wasn't playing possum. Raccoon. Raccoon. Thought it was a cat for Excellent a minute. shape. Excellent shape. Well, actually, I've seen him in better shape. Well, yeah, it would look better if it was running away from us. <laughs> but nonetheless, this is in excellent shape. Why don't we get it and take it? We've got a little rigor mortis, but that's about it. It's yeah. a good specimen. Yeah. What do you think? Let's take her. I'm thinking she smells like a raccoon that shuffled off her mortal coil. There you go. Heavy raccoon, up at about 15 pounds. We'll call her Rocky. Rocky, very good. Huh? Slip right. her right in there, and, right. uh, and the hunt continues. The hunt continues. Less than a mile down the road, we found Rocky's friend. This one looked like he was pushed over a good 15, 20 feet. He looks like he's in repose. Oh, he sure is. Ah, oh, he's just resting. Oh, man. This was probably hit maybe first thing this morning. Very good coloration. Very good coon. So maybe, I mean, all things considered, this was a... Uh, a relatively, uh, oh, I don't know, humane way to go. I mean, it, maybe it was quick, you know? Well, it probably was very quick. I yes. hope it was quick. Yeah. Shall I? Why don't you? Let's take the... it. Right this way. In she goes. With two coons in the bag, 